He wasn't ready for it. This year, in game one, he stepped into the plate. He walked a lot of people, but you know what? He kind of stayed, and he kind of stayed his ground. Only gave up two runs, but he was a very good pitcher in game one. Can't wait to see him in game five. Yeah, he was terrific in pitching around those base runners he allowed, but it would be far easier to pitch if he didn't have base runners on all the time. So what do you see happening coming down the stretch? Uh, I think that, I mean, tonight with Randy Wolf, I got the Dodgers winning that game. I think, you know, Randy Wolf and, you know, the Phillies use about four or five different left-handed bats. And if, again, if you're saying that a guy's got a bat, you know, you know Randy Wolf's 196 batting average against on the left side of the plate and, you know, in this season, then you're thinking only one of those guys are going to get a hit. You know what I mean? One out of those four or five guys will get a hit tonight. And I'm thinking the only person that has a legit shot is Jimmy Rollins, who hits very well against left-handed pitchers. Well, that's because he's a speed guy. He, he, you know, if you get his ball in the hole, he, you know, just don't even try to throw him at the first. But um, with that, I, I think with Clayton Kershaw, Cole Hamels in Game Five, it's going to be a very good, green, you know, great game to see a rematch of Game One. Um, I, I mean, I, as much as I hate to say it, I think the Phillies end up winning the series. Before the series started, I gave it to the Dodgers, but the Dodgers aren't doing anything right now to make me believe that they can win this series. So I got to give it right. To, I got to give it to the Phillies. I go back and defend their championship in the World Series. As of the AL. Um, the Yankees are being just too dominant right now. I mean, it's just they're they're winning at every phase of the game, pitching off in you know pitching, hitting, relief pitching, they're doing it all. I mean, I mean, you got to figure tonight. You know, who they got going tonight? Andy Pett. Andy Pett will go tonight for game three. You know, job is available in the pen if needed. Um, and you know, if if albeit Andy Pettit goes about six innings tonight, save Jabba for the seventh and maybe the eighth. But to give it to Mariano Rivera in the ninth, it's it's a done deal, and that's going to be the you know that's the you know that's basically the whole you know game plan for the rest of the series. Also, when CC goes in Game Four, you know it's kind of like you know it's got to keep going. You know, and I think the Yankees starting pitching, even if you go to a three man rotation, those three guys, Sabathia, Burnett, Pettin, still probably the best one two three can you know combo in the playoffs right now. Yeah, I have to agree with you as far as the island goes. I hadn't picked the Dodgers to begin with, but with their recent struggles with the, the amount of base runners they're allowing and the fact that they're kind of inept offensively now, part of that can be attributed to the great uh, Phillies pitching. I got to tip my hats in. They have pitched far better than I had imagined they would. I mean, everybody knows Cliff Lee is terrific, but yeah. I mean, Cole Hamels kind of struggled coming down the stretch at the end of the year, and now he's turned things on to. Uh, the way he was last year in the playoffs, and that's where we got to know Cole Hamels. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I, I do see uh, the Dodgers evening up the series, but I, I do think that the Phillies, with their uh, ability to take it all the way last year, they got a bit more playoff experience. So I think the Phillies will have a slight edge in this series. I, I do think, though, that it, it will be a seven-gamer, but – I'm going to change my pick to the Phillies uh, as well. The Phillies and seven. Yeah. It's a very legit pick and very awesome yeah, to say. Brandon, there's... It's just uh, the team is great to go. I mean, that'd be, you know, the Yankees are very, you know, very poetic. I mean, how they pit, you know, how they play. It's very, very awesome to see. But uh, the Dodgers, on the other hand, they are struggling. They can't seem to pitch right now. So they'll be uh, good to go. I think the Dodgers really got to work on some things and, Joe Torre, you know, next will be his last year of coaching. And that's going to be very sad to see him go out. So I hope he wins on you. Know, I want him to win this series to go to the World Series. I'd love to see a Dodgers Yankees World Series where he goes against his former team and see how much he, how good he pitches against them. Because, I mean, he knows those guys. He handpicked those guys. And, you know, guys like, you know, Derek Jeter, guys like Aaron, you know, you know, he didn't have CC with him. So, I mean, but he knows CC from the Cleveland Indians. So you kind of know your competition. And he. I can't wait to see what he does. And you know, the thought process. And Charlie Manuel's the same way. Charlie Manuel's a great coach. So I mean, I'll go ahead and uh, give him that. I mean, if, even if they do end up taking that series, I gotta go ahead and say it's all up to, you know, it's all up to them. We'll be back with the NFL talk in just a second here on the Red. <laughs> Back to the raid. Joining us now is our NFL analyst slash semi expert, Brandon Brown. What's up, everybody? Hey, glad to be back on my show. <laughs> In case y'all didn't know, Brandon was behind there directing there at the baseball park because uh, his forte is football. So we're going to go, we're going to game a break. We said he had to talk about playoff baseball. So we said, 
Who are we going to bring in for football? The that king, man right there. The king himself. Let's not say the king, okay? Because uh, <laughs> obviously his choice. I know y'all looking at this. That's not the team he supports. Six-time champions. Like he Six cares. Times. <laughs> Six he doesn't care. Game. He doesn't care about the Steelers people. <laughs> Don't let him lie. Let's get right into the NFL talk, guys. Yeah, let's go. All right, ahead. All right we're going to break down some you know, very key matchups for the next game and for this next week. And the first one we're going to start off with is the Vikings and the Steelers. Minnesota. Shut up, man. <laughs> Minnesota. You know, Minnesota coming off a great win against you know against the Baltimore Ravens. Baltimore Ravens. The Steelers coming back with a win against um, the Cleveland Browns. So I mean, what do y'all think about this game this week? Well, you know, this is going to be a high-powered matchup. You know, we have the world champions and we have the undefeated Minnesota Vikings. Now, you know, we can say that Minnesota has some, you know, some, some, some very lucky wins. You yes, know, they have. Against the 40, I've seen about two lucky wins. Exactly, against the 49ers and, of course, you know, the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah. But, you know, you know there, I, I believe that there's more to this, you know, this Vikings team, you know, than just, you know, the, their defensive front. You know, you have to take into account, you know, of course Adrian Peterson, but that rookie Percy Harvin, that man is incredible. He's, he's doing he's he's doing something that we haven't seen from the Vikings before and that's establishing a really good passing game. I mean we've seen we've seen a lot, you know, with Chris Carter, Randy Moss, but we haven't seen anything quite like this. Exactly. We're seeing a whole new passing offense from this team. They come through here, they've gotten a lot of uh gotten a lot of success from, you know, Brett Favre and they're going to have to, you know, one thing they're going to have to do better with, though, is try to, you know, defend teams. I mean, look what they did with Ray Rice. The, you know, they, I mean, of course, that was a great, you know, block protection, you know, to, you know, to bump Jared out of the outside so he couldn't make the tackle. But they've got to defend the run a lot better than they are right now. I'm going to have to agree with you guys. Uh, Minnesota, with the addition of Percy Harvin and Brett Favre, of course, is, which we can't miss because it's always in the news. Obviously. Uh, <laughs> but he has added a nice new dimension to a passing game that was relatively lackluster last year. Uh, and you got, of course, AD. But I have to question the defense, just like you guys were. Uh, coming in, I thought they would be one of the best in the business with that too. front four, yeah, the, that's the two Williams brothers in the middle, along with Jared Allen. Terrific pass rusher, as we saw against Green Bay. Right. That's true. Um, he... he, he he, really, he lit up that rookie he did. Yes, he did. And, and you and, can't help him. But. And at the same time, you have to understand that Green Bay, their offense line is really depleted. They just yeah. signed Tauscher, again, yeah, who's a veteran left tackle, a really good one, too. But th- with this matchup, I think if the Steelers show an inability to run the football like they have in weeks past, they are going to struggle. And, yes, it, is, and it is going to be bad because the way the Vikings can run the football as well, but the way they stay committed to it and being led by Brett Favre when they're – you know, at times can struggle running the football. Yeah. Well, you know, the one thing with the Steelers, you know, of course, you know, they have had trouble running the pass, but, you know, they have, you know, fast Louis Parker back. Yeah, you know, so, have. you know, that does help, you know, that does help, Lee you know, Parker. Richard Mendenhall. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, you know, with the, the, that tandem, you know, could be something incredible if they can just establish that. They could and be last year's uh, Carolina Panthers. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it could be the same way this year if they get it going. They keep it up. I'm not going to take what they did against the Browns yesterday. But they got to do better this week. They've and plus, got to do better. And plus, it does help the Steelers' defense that Brett Favre has to account for one extra person, Troy Polamalu. That's right. That's right. Coming back. Polamalu came back yesterday. Great game to come back against the Browns. Go ahead yeah. and get your feedback, honey. Uh-huh. But he's going to have his, you know, his hands full this week. Mm-hmm. When last time we seen Polamalu before yesterday was in week one against the Titans. And before he was hurt, he was, he was all over the field. Yes, mm-hmm. he was. And I don't think that's going to stop him this week. Not against a team like the Vikings. You know, you know when guys, you know, guys get that extra adrenaline rush when they see Brett Favre on the other side. It's a legend. And what is he you know, like? You know, I'm going to use a wrestling, you know, a wrestling you know, analogy here. Randy Orton, the legend killer back in the day. Yes. You know, it's the same way. Paul Amalu says, you know what? Brett Favre is a legend. I want to go after the legend. I want to be the one that puts my name on him. And so, I mean, a lot of people say, you know, hey, I want my chance. I want my child to hit him. But, no, nobody wants it more than a guy like Troy Polamalu. Right. And he is just awesome. And having him on that defense changes up how you prepare for You know, how, that changes scout teams because that's just how it goes. It doesn't just say, hey, all right, Polamalu's back. It's not like when Sean Merriman came back for the Chargers. You know, you got to go, that's Troy Polamalu. The exactly. best defense. 